And everybody, hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. One of these days, I'm going to have like a solid like two month run where I get to host this show, Ben. I feel like it's Just coming. Just you wait. Just you wait. I feel like in the early days of the <clears throat> pop, there was um, a, like a like a Super Carlin Brothers, you know, like phenomenon which was simply <laughs> saying that, the word phenomenon yeah exactly the, 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 the phenomenon phenomenon exactly phenomenon um which was just basically that we have the jay versus ben show over at super carlin brothers where we face off and you know mostly harry potter trivia above all else but uh, other trivias to be sure and it is just extremely well known that you win every single episode and I, and I always lose sure i've won more than you yeah, and I yeah. think that that's pretty much it. Like when it really boils down to it, I feel like that is that like I, I'm that like maybe it's my my own imposter syndrome or maybe it's just the truth. But it's like I I tend to think that the reason that people give me this is because I can't win on my own on the Javers. And so it's like everybody's come together. We've I've the 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 support is there. They're like we, we're just we just we feel bad for you. Are you concerned that if you start winning at trivia, you might lose hostmanship? Oh, I'm intentionally losing at this point. Yeah, for, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure you are. Absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no I'm just trying to save face in both directions. Yeah. No. Um, that's a good question, though. I don't know. Um, my hope is, my, my grand ambition, actually, I can I can dive right on into my, my Wick of the Peak because I'm currently doing another reread of Name of the Wind. Is that your Wick of the Peak? It is. Name Wind, of the Wind again. Name of the Wind Specifically again. Specifically like a fifth time. I think I'm on my seventh. Okay, so your recommendation is Name of the Wind a seventh time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I think, Read it seven I, times. I think when it really comes down to it, because, okay, here's a thing that I feel like has been like rattling through my brain a little bit lately. Rattle on, dude. Rattle on. Which is like, the sometimes I, I think I'm, I'm almost like sad with myself for revisiting the same stories so many times. Mm-hmm. Why, versus, why are you sad with yourself for that? Uh, because it's almost as if I'm not broadening my horizons. I'm sticking like within what feels safe. Oh, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like my comfort zone. It's like, I, I feel, I, I know the people here. I know the characters. I know where they go. I know the familiar beats. I know the parts I like, I know the parts I don't like, you know? And as a result, it's, it's like, am I not broadening my horizons enough? You know, mm. is it the structural equ- equivalent of like not going out on a Friday night with the potential to meet new people because you don't know who those people. I see. Yeah. It's like, it's like when you go to a new, it's like when you go to a restaurant you've been to like twice before and it's like, I know if I get this, I'm going to have a great meal, but also I've had great meals every time I've been here, which is only twice. So probably anything I order would be great, but maybe not. And I've only gotten to come here three times. So should I get what I always get? Right. Or no, branch I, out. I think this is that's a that's a great example though. It's yeah. like, yeah, you go to a restaurant, you you know what you like, mm-hmm. so you continue to get what you like. But once upon a time you came there for the first time, and when you came there for the first time, you tried something new for the first time. Exactly. Which ended up being the thing. So it's like this this restaurant <laughs> has a one hundred percent batting record with you, which is to say that like the first thing you ever tried you liked, and therefore you continue to eat it forever. But why not why not instill more faith into the establishment and say, like, hey, maybe everything else here is also really good. Mm-hmm. And I would also get that every time if it had been the thing that I ordered for the first time. So anyway, um I, I would say that it's something I struggle with where it's like, should I be reading more new stories and earlier this year i did the 75 hard challenge and and through that i read like i don't know like eight to ten books about uh varying stages of like self-help type yeah right self-improvement self-improvement column category uh non-fiction books and i actually very much enjoyed those way more than i thought that i would i definitely thought that it was going to be like a very like snake oil type of you know thinking about the world and i was like but no like i actually think that like every single one of the books that i read during that period of time like allowed me or aided me in the process of making like a small change yeah which was extremely beneficial to my overall livelihood i think they landed on snake oil for the thing like, why isn't I, it why isn't it other animals oils that that these like peddlers are trying to pass off i have a theory but it's inappropriate oh so i won't explain it on okay. air 
I'll tell you afterwards. Oh, all um, right. But that probably is a little self-explanatory on its own. Anyway. I want a bottle of lion oil, Ben. Lion yeah. oil? Lion oil. Ooh. Yeah. You might not, though. Maybe not. Or maybe even mighty useful. Wouldn't that be like the most alarming thing People ever? People be like, where'd you get the oil? <laughs> <laughs> it's lion. It's lion oil. <laughs> Someone told me today that limes float, but lemons <clears throat> don't. What? Or maybe it's the other way around. That can. That is so. Uh, the only reason I brought it up is because when you said lion oil, I really thought you were gonna say lime oil. Lime oil. That's just lime juice, you know. Or is it? Or is it? Yeah. If you squeeze the inside of a lime, you get lime juice. If you just squeeze a lime in your hand, you're gonna get the oil. Your lime oil. Your lime oil. You get all that zest, you know. Right. Right. Which, <clears throat> when applied to your your bodily surface, can either help you float or sink, depending on your objective. <laughs> There's why would they feel like they're such similar fruits? Like, why would one float and the other not? I don't know. I don't know. And on that note, one of the things that I've been just remarkably blown away with as this year you and I have gotten quite into plants is the fact that seeds contain all of the necessary like like data if you will, to grow the thing that grows from them. Right. Like, it is remarkable to me that like things grow that there's so much data packed into that little tiny seed it's unbelievable it is unbelievable and yeah. then like it, and then the plant knows how to grow like pumpkins and such yeah it's like what a, what a unique thing to know how to grow i don't know how to grow pumpkins also once upon a time where they're just were, were all plants that we know wild plants or is it the case that like so many of the plants that we know have been so engineered that we know them as what we know them as today like like apple seeds, for example. Like I know that if you take seeds from like a like a red apple, like a red delicious apple, you won't get a red delicious apple tree. You'll get a crab apple tree. Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. And then but like there's there's like a like a lottery chance. But then you can still go to orchards that have nothing but apple trees. Right. For red delicious apples in every single direction as far as you can see because of grafting. Yeah, you can like graft the tree onto another tree. Right. Make yourself a new red delicious. So it's like all apple, all all apples from of a particular variety all like have the same exact ancestor, like the ancestor old tree. Yeah, whoa. basically, yeah, isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah, that is weird. Oh, it's really just like that one tree is just like I'm doing great right now. That Honeycrisp tree, he's like, wow, I crushed it at being apples. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> really crushed it, man. I went to an apple orchard once, and they had, you know, of course they've got like 17 varieties of apples, and you're going around, and you know, we walk down like several rows, and you're like, oh, I've never heard of this kind of apple, and you know, you pick one off the tree and you take a bite and whatever. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, that was that one's all right. And it's like, yeah, I don't know about these. I don't, it's like oh, you're starting to realize why you haven't heard of the other kinds of apples, and some um, of them will be like better for like cider, and some of them will be better for like pie or something like that. They're not all just like good hand fruit eating apples but we ran into someone who works there was like do you guys have like a section for like honey crisps and he just like the 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 eye roll scoff this guy gave us just like oh yeah you're just here for the everyone wants honey crisp and it's like yeah that is what i would like please tell me where I go and he like proceeded not to tell us where the honey crisps were and i was very upset he worked there he worked there and didn't tell you where the correct honey he like took it. It felt like it took it. He took it personally that everyone likes the same kind of apple and not all the other apples on the farm. <laughs> like, um, I don't care. <laughs> you were not an apple hipster. Yeah, I guess I'm not an apple hipster. Interesting. Interesting. Although I tell you what, when I went to co <clears throat> on this exact note, when I went to college, like I got a Mac laptop and it was the first time I ever had like a Mac product of any description. OK, and that was like the year like Mac laptops like started popping up everywhere okay so it was like 2010 all of a sudden so i did feel very much like a apple hipster at the time oh that's interesting <clears throat> that is interesting yeah like yeah. To, like to go back and, and be a part of that because what's in, even more interesting about that too is that probably five six seven eight years prior uh college students maybe wouldn't have necessarily all had laptops oh that's probably true too um yeah they might not have all had them and they probably were mostly pcs but this was like when those like justin long commercials were on tv were like i'm a mac and i'm a pc you know? oh my gosh i remember those yeah <laughs> good Wait, what's justin long up to these days i don't know just basking in probably you know um dodgeball royalties <laughs> oh yeah no doubt no doubt no doubt yeah that, that's probably where they all came from yeah well done justin long um anyway to 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 circle back to 
things that we revisit. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna find my way back there because that was that, that was how this entire tangent began. Was that I I started reading Name of the Wind again. Right, and basically. So I've got these qualms about it, which are which are basically just that I'm not like expanding my horizons. Instead, I'm inspecting my Verizons. That's probably not the opposite of a horizon. What's Is the opposite? Horizon. Yeah. No. What, what's the opposite of a horizon? Uh, like like the ground beneath your feet. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We're going with that. So. What, what I'm what I'm torn between though is there's there's this idea of expanding your horizons and learning more about more things but maybe in a subtler in a, in a less subtle sense and then there is revisiting topics and like really being able to like spend time with them and like understand more and more and more and <sighs> the thing about reading name of the wind over and over and over again is that it's so long and there's so much detail and it's so well written that like I keep, understanding and learning new things and getting like a better idea of like what Patrick Rothfuss was like going for as he like wrote this story. Right. And it's like, I'm like endlessly impressed with like how well it's all coming together. And I'm like, I feel like I'm like really starting to like get it, Mm -hmm. you know, which is even interesting because a huge part of the story is this idea of telling stories, but also it's like, knowing something so well that you can speak the true name of that thing. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's like, I'm like, this is odd, but I feel like I'm like, I'm like starting <clears throat> to touch the edges of the true name of the name of the wind uh, book yeah. series. Right. Um, which has been like cool because it's like, okay, like, like all the, all the puzzle slider pieces are like, they're falling into place. And I'm like, Oh, Oh yeah, this is exciting. So anyway, I've talked about name of the wind a whole bunch of times here on the pop. And yeah. I, I'm, I hope that I have actually like moved the needle in terms of popularity of the series. There's no way we haven't moved the needle. Some, I think, I mean, so many people have messaged us saying how much they love the name of the wind and it's so good. But like, to your point, I don't think there's really anything wrong with going back and just revisiting and getting to know something better and better and better. Like you might not be expanding your entire horizons, but you certainly have uh, like a, maybe, I don't know, it was like a, a deeper hole on this horizon or something. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. You're expanding your horizons in terms of name of the wind. And I think it's just I'm digging like, the hole so deep I can't <clears throat> see the horizon anymore. Well, the whatever. Problem. Here's the thing, though. It's just like I think it it really depends on, you know, what, what your goal is. Like if the re- like it sounds like for some reason you feel guilty about not broadening your horizons as if that's what's expected it would be the correct thing to do but like if you're like um like a heart surgeon or something i'm not that interested in you broadening your horizons i want you to continue to know more and more and more and more about heart surgery more and more and more and more and more about heart surgery right that's a good point. you know that's like good point. that's that it's less better i mean maybe it's beneficial to have a greater understanding of like more medicine in general but like as it as it always pertains to doing this one thing you're specifically good at and, you know, you got to have specialists and you got to have generalists. And if you need to fluctuate based on the seasons of life on whether or not you want to be expanding your horizons or learning more about Name of the Wind, I think both are totally acceptable. <laughs> OK, so what would you classify yourself as to put the spotlight on you as mm-hmm. a generalist versus a specialist? Oh, I, d- I pretty much definitely go down specialist on almost everything. Interesting. OK, so yeah. you're you're <clears throat> you. And this is a good point, actually, because I do feel like you you dial into things, but you have strategies and like tactics that end up working across many a different avenue, sure, as well. Like I like I think that you have, um, it, we've talked about it a lot before, but like sort of like the idea of like playing board games or video games and stuff like that. Your mind can strategize very quickly to like th- determine like what is the more or likely best like most optimal way to go about doing like a a specific thing like you could apply that to a a day at the parks at disney as much as you could apply it to Mm. you know like a game of monopoly or something like that right know, like they're um those things could seem more similar than i don't know than different but you're gonna want to buy orange and monopoly oh really yeah why don't you want to buy orange and monopoly No, you do oh you do want to buy orange and monopoly orange and red those are the two like most bang for your buck property how did you figure that out oh i mean i've just like listened to podcasts about it i've also um received some thrashings of monopoly from people who i think just like choke i i used to we used to have some neighbors on the street and they had this red Sox version of monopoly okay and they were enormous red Sox fans okay and they loved playing monopoly so um they knew like about all the history of it and i think it just turned out like that their favorite like historic players happened to be on the red 
properties. Okay. Like that's how this particular version works. Like you can just, you know, your properties are like famous players from the history of the franchise. Sure. And so they would always want them and they would always get them and uh, they would win. And it was just sort of like, I can't believe this is so effective. Like why? Like, and it's just like, I would go on to learn that like, if you like math it out, like the immediate return on investment on those is like the best in the game. Interesting. Like, uh, what is it? Like Park Place and what is the and Boardwalk? Like, you'd think those are good, but like those are terrible to get. Well, they're very expensive, <clears throat> and there's a low probability of landing on them. Exactly, I suppose is what yeah. it comes down to. Red and but orange have a like a three in forty chance to be landed on, and the they are affordable and easy to build up, and the return is high. Interesting. So this is, I mean, it, it actually, it, it's. <clears throat> I'm curious about it because I don't do this like like it if we were in applying it to like a like a business application or something like that then I then I feel like I would think to to run those numbers on everything to determine like what has like the best ratios and stuff like yeah. that but in terms of like a game that I would like sit down with others like my mind doesn't even start to go down the avenues. And this is why it's interesting is because in certain aspects of my life, my mind would do that in other aspects of my life. Like if I, like if we we're sitting down to a game of monopoly, I wouldn't be like, okay, okay. Like let's, let's figure this out. Right. Like, you know, what's, what's going on here? Which direction do you take it? Like, what's the best, what's the high value? What's going to have the high, like, right. Like, and, and yet certain people do have the ability to like, to, to think this way and it was funny because you and I and our trainer Gabriel were talking um, just the other day about the new Nintendo Switch game uh, Super Mario Strikers <coughs> yes that that came out and it was even funny listening to the way that like he would describe setting up his field for play like he was like okay like I always put like someone big like Donkey Kong or Bowser you know like in the four slot because that that slot tends to play like the like the defense position in the diamond yeah you know whereas like i put um like this character up front like yoshi because he's got like like he's good at shooting you know and and so if he's at like the front of the diamond he's my one slot and then like whatever for like the midfielders and stuff and i was like wow every single time i've ever played this game i've literally just basically like dropped in and randomly select characters based, <laughs> based on, on what seems fun yeah. it, exactly like in and to even think about which slot you know like maybe i've played with bowser every single time because i just think he like looks cool yeah but like sometimes i might select him first sometimes i might select him third like i'm, I'm absolutely not like thinking ahead to the point to figure out like what's going to be the most effective on the field. Yeah. And I can't tell because some of this to me feels like experience, you know? So it's almost like the, the more time you spend with something, the more you just know to look at that. Like I've only played maybe a grand total of two hours of this game yeah, ever. ever. And it's <clears throat> always been for, um, just like some, some like bonus content. Yeah. Like entertainment purposes. Exactly. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even trying to like sit down and necessarily win so much as just like, let's put the ball on the field and like, and, and hit go whatever happens, happens. That's right. fine. Um, so it's, it would be curious to me to, to like, to see how long it would take for me to start figuring out like that, that is part of the strategy. And even similarly, like with monopoly, like how many times do you sit down and actually play Monopoly? Like I, I feel like most people play it once and they're like, that's enough for the next two years. Yeah, well, especially today. Like Monopoly, I feel like when we were growing up, was sort of like the most well-known ubiquitous board game that like everyone absolutely had and played. Yep. And it was like the easiest, like, I don't know. It <clears throat> for sure. Whereas like today, I don't know how many people are really playing that much Monopoly. It feels like it feels like I would want to play it with my kids so that they would simply know what Monopoly was, but less to have like a good time. <laughs> you know? Interesting. It's like this you is know, a history this lesson. Is a kids. History, like, look, you're gonna need to know about Monopoly because it's like it was this really ubiquitous game, and there's a thousand versions of it, and like it's a you know like it, it it's gonna come up in life. You'll probably play Monopoly again, and there's that. But like anymore, like if you're into tabletop gaming, you're definitely not playing Monopoly. You know, like you. Like if you went down to like Blade Gaming right now, where, uh, you know, I do like my Pokemon tournaments. Like they have a whole section of the store just dedicated to tabletop games. I bet they don't even sell it. Oh you know? really? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's that's really fascinating. But so I think I see where you're going here, where it's just like, well, where you're talking, but like about how whether or not you're like broadening your horizons or applying things like 
across things. But it's like, I could say that like, I'm into board games, but it's like, I bet there are people who would be like, I'm into F- Catan, you know? Like one board I'm game. I'm into one board game. And it's like, you could probably apply a lot of uh, things. So like, t- like from your point of view, it might be like, man, she's just like really into like board games. Like what a specific sliver to be in it's like once you're in that world though that's like it's not a sliver at all it's like massive you know right but right like, sure enough i mean you can you can, there's like certain like ways you can try and always implement some strategy and certainly like a lot of games will have like a, a similar setup or a similar concept or something that you can start maybe like oh this was kind of like that game i bet this will work here um kind of thing but like, I, w- I wouldn't even, I think you're selling yourself short even on Super Strikers though, on the Mario game. Um, I think you're doing it more than you realize. Like, uh, I don't know about you. The only thing I've really picked up on thus far is that like, I try and pick Peach or Toad because they have the highest speed stats. Okay. And it's just like, historically, I know in sports games, speed is always like the o- overpowered. Like, okay. <clears throat> almost inevitably so this is this is a piece of knowledge that you know about video games just hard stop like uh like do you remember like um backyard sports yeah yeah of course right and uh backyard sports is a fantastic computer game when we were kids they had it for like every sport and it was really cool because each each version if you had like backyard football like you would have a few celebrity uh you know genuine professional players as kids in the game so i think like our game had like drew bledsoe in it like before he got injured and tom brady took over and you know really controlled the sport for the next two decades (laughs) (laughs) but but you could choose drew bledsoe or brett Favre to be on your team but then the the remaining cast of characters that filled out the roster would be the same in every game so it's like the same backyard kids would play in the baseball game and the soccer game and the football game or whatever right like they were like constants within the realm Yeah, yeah exactly there was a constants and let me tell you what it didn't really matter which game you were playing who you wanted was like pd wheeler because he was the kid who had the highest speed stat and whatever game you were playing you wanted him because he no one could touch him okay so here's my question then so like if you were to take a bunch of experienced video game players and put them all into a room to play this brand new game called mario strikers for the first time that nobody's ever heard of which people have heard of it was a game before it was a game and you know it used to be on the gamecube and stuff like that but like do you think that all of these experienced gamers would all come to that conclusion? Like they would all be like, oh yeah, you want Toad and Peach? No doubt. Like those are the, those are the two like essentials. Mm. Like, like would you end up having a bunch of people who are all running effectively the same teams given a world where they don't have an extensive amount of time to like master someone else like that that would be the thing is that I, it would not surprise me if if that was a quick thing because like even even when we're playing like i i think of it like i know that right now based on my skill level with the game which is very little <laughs> that like with little skill speed can compensate for a lot okay like i it's like it's because it's like even just playing a few games it's like okay none of us are very good that's for sure <laughs> right right but like if you get the ball you can just move around the field with toad and they people just can't catch you and mm-hmm. just like eventually they will miss and then you can pass to someone who's open and like that's basically all i've tried to do okay it's just like like not even try and pull any move just like run towards someone and then turn around with the joystick and right, go right. for it um with that but to this end there was there's been a few games that we have played where um there's like five of us in the office and we typically are always playing five player which i think is making it harder to learn because it absolutely it's is, not like yes. you can just sit there by yourself and like practice passing the ball around like you probably would but there's been a few occasions where it's just been me and you versus the other people in the office uh where like you and me are on one team the three of them are on the other team and on those occasions like suddenly there was like one game in particular or one day in particular when we were playing when it was very clear to me that without speaking to each other me and you had picked up on the very obvious how to score strategy and were implementing it over and over without the other team like wising up to what we were doing at all that's fair and it was i mean i mean it's the most basic soccer strategy of ever of go down the sideline and cross it into the center and then jam a (laughs) which is but shoot 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 shoot, shoot. silently and wordlessly me and you realized it and 
were score outscoring them immediately. Interesting. Okay. And that, like I could tell you were doing it on purpose. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. that's <laughs> true. Um and so maybe maybe it's more like built into a like subconscious my sleeping mind, mm, you know, knows yeah. knows what to do. Um but like okay, so take like a survival situation for example. Like this is sort of one of those where it's like you you get marooned on an island, the big 3 are always food, water, shelter. <coughs> um almost anybody in like a survival world would immediately know that like you can survive the longest without food, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you need like some protection from the elements so that you don't either get like scorched or rained on to death or whatever. But like realistically, like you, you can't live for more than like a few days, a couple of days without water. And so it's like, you pretty much have to solve that before you can start working on anything, anything. And it's like, so that simple, like set of strategy sense, so to speak. It's like, I, it's, it's like with, with monopoly going back to that example, it's, right. it's like the idea of like, Oh, red and orange. Like those are the ones you want. Like that's like the equivalent of like, th- this is water, you know? And like people who are like, like board game strategists, like find water in these games so quickly. It's right. like, th- like they know what to look for. Like they know speed is like the correct ingredient right. for like a successful you know, sports team or whatever. And it's like, it's like, this is sort of like built in knowledge that like we've all agreed upon, like this is how it works. And those are the things that I, I've like, I love that kind of information. Like I love knowing the answers to those questions, but sometimes when I hear people talk about it, and this is what was happening when I was listening to you and Gabriel talk about that game. And then also Mario Kart, uh, it was just like fascinating that you guys knew the answers and I was like, I've, I've existed in like the same orbit. Like it never occurred to me that you pick toad in Mario Kart because toad has the fastest acceleration. Right. Like I always assumed as a kid that you like lucked into having picked toad as your character. And it just also kind of turned out that like toad was sort of the best, mm-hmm. but like it, it felt like based on the conversation we were having the other day that you like, there was a reason you were picking toad. I can tell you that as a kid, uh, I think it was a little bit more like, I think I played around enough with the characters and determined toad to be the best. Um, but I don't think I could have put into words why he was the best. It was just like, I, or at least I thought he was the best based on like my, or like, the way I played the game. Okay. So here's a question then. So if you're in competitive Mario Kart play then, Mm -hmm. and maybe I'm, I'm asking the same question a few different ways, but like, um, now I'm just curious. Like, so if you're in competitive Mario Kart play, does everybody agree that toad is the best? I wouldn't say so. Probably even though. No. Okay. No, that's really hard to know. Like, um, cause you can go online and you can just find people who are, really good at the game and they'll be playing with like a really heavy character. Okay. You know, and it's like you know, the heavy care, the, the way it typically works in Mario Kart is that the heavy characters have, um, higher top speed, but low excel- acceleration and then vice versa. Right. So like, I, I would argue that you want a high acceleration character because you're going to um, get hit a because lot. Mario Kart is a game where you come to a dead stop a lot, right? Because you're getting hit with items all the time. So being able to get back to speed is more important because even if you're going faster at the top speed, you're going to come to a dead halt again soon. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> but even that, like, that's that's the kind of math that, like, I feel like I would have a hard time doing in my head. Like, what, yeah. like what's going to, what is going to ultimately pan out better? Because right. the other thing about Mario Kart that I would say is that, like, um, whenever you and I have played, it's almost always been the case that you've been eons ahead in first place and that I have been right in the middle of like the hailstorm in like sixth place. Yeah. You know, and that's like the worst place to be because like four, fifth, six, everyone behind you is getting extremely good and useful. Yeah. Mario Kart is a game where, yeah, it's certainly like the rich get richer a little bit. We're like, if you're way out in front, you are very, very hard to catch because the items don't apply to you nearly as much. Like exactly. There's like the lightning, but that hits the whole field. There's the blue shell, but even that, if you're really good, you can dodge it. (laughs) You know, um, if you know the items, is that a fact? Can you dodge? There is. Well, there's the one in the newest game. There's like that, like boom box or whatever. And that would like crack the blue shell. And I think that's the only way to dodge it the new game but on the version before that um if you had a mushroom on you you could time it so that as it crashed on you you could hit the mushroom and it would miss you okay 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 so here let me let me give my next example then okay so what i'm like when when a new game come a new game comes out 
Are you aware that it will behoove <clears throat> you to find the answers to the questions a la Reddit post, player's guide? Like, like before anybody has like picked up the controller, have you prepared in some way to be more prepared than the other people there? No. Okay. Okay. Because no. one of the things that in my early aquarium career that uh, I was doing a lot of is there was a guy out of Florida that I was doing a bunch of work for, and um, I would frequently go to the the very big aquarium conferences with him and help set up these like just absolutely magnificent aquarium displays that would be up for like three and a half, four days, Yeah, you know? And it was this huge undertaking. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge undertaking to set up an aquarium in someone's home where it is intended to stay forever, let alone have one come off of like a trailer, wheel it through a gigantic event center, set it in place, fill it with water by using like jugs, Yeah, you know, and then also have it like display ready within like a day and a half. And so as a result, this was like, this called for people who all of whom knew a lot about what they were doing. They were very capable. They were very qualified. Um, and you needed to be like smart and quick. And the thing that I started realizing that like would put me in a really strong position with the rest of the group is I would get up early before breakfast, go down to our spot and I would look through every single one of the boxes I'd like the, the 12 boxes, these huge crates that we had that were just packed with the materials for mm -hmm. unpacking. And I would like make a list of what was in every single box. And then throughout the rest of the day, I became like the point person. For like the inventory guy, the inventory guy is like, yeah. Hey, do you know where those, like those pipe cutters are? And it's like, yeah, third box on the left, you know, it was like, and then all of a sudden it was like these like little, these like little snippets of like, I wouldn't even call them authority, but like just my ability to answer someone else's question gave me like more confidence, which then allowed me to just like do better at the whole thing. Mm. And the first time this ever happened, it happened by accident. I just happened to, I was traveling and I think it was like a time zone thing. And I just happened to be up like way before everyone. And I was like, I'm gonna just go see what's going on. Like go see the exhibit hall. And while I was there, I was like, Oh, what's in this box? And I was like, man, this works. Yeah. You know? So then I did it every single time from, from then on out. And I always felt like it was like, it was like my own like little cheat code right for these weekends mm -hmm. you know it was like my way to like excel. but you didn't tell anyone else did you like everyone we should all go down before breakfast and try and memorize the boxes it'll make us all more efficient yeah i assumed that that would not come across as as <clears throat> a sure they yeah, had maybe that has a different sort of like <laughs> yeah, yeah. i think you're all not doing a very good job right yeah. right right, right. Yeah. yeah like my my goal is to just be as helpful as possible because there's nothing worse than when somebody asks me a question i don't know the answer and i'm like i don't know how to help mm -hmm. so i guess we'll have to ask somebody else mm -hmm. i'll help you with that yeah i'll help you ask somebody else <clears throat> i will tell you though so you like it's not i typically would never like learn like try and figure out a strategy for a game before i'd ever played it okay but certainly if i play the game and enjoy it then it is not uncommon that i would like after the fact go like look up like what are like common strategies you might employ like what is the best like yeah what is the best and like a lot of times there's not always like a this is absolutely the best way to do it uh -huh. but there are there's there's very often like what would you come across as you look at like enough games is like like the way in which things are figured out it's like a lot of times it'll just come down to like numbers you know, like if you can figure out the the like the math behind what is the best sure. like a situation. Like um, I remember looking up like Sushi Go once upon a time because that's like a very fun, easy pick and pass game. And it's like it seems like when you're playing it, like so much of it's going to come down to like you got to get lucky. You got to try and memorize what's in five different people's hands and look at what they've got. And how is everyone going to play? And like, you know, how much defense and how aggressive do you want to be? And it's like, but what they were saying, it was just like trying to like recognize what are the best combos you can get? Cause I think over the course of the game, you get like nine cards or something, depending on the number of people. And it was just like the very, the very basic card. I think it's just called, I think one of the sashimi, there's a set of them that scores you points. Like it's just a base number. There's no, like no multiplier available. Right. Just like, this is three points. End of that. And it was just like, like this thing I was reading was like, if you just always take that card always, that's good. Like, because it mathed it out and it's like, oh yeah, you want to take the, the fried rice. That'll get you five points. If you've got two of them, the two of those cards will both equal five. And it's like, then both of those cards are basically worth 2.5 points. 
and it's like, ah, so this one card's worth three, and that's better than this whole combo you set up, you know? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. This is like, yeah. and I just tried that one time. I was like, anytime the sashimi came around, I was just like, I'll always take the two or the three every single time. It's just like, they're guaranteed points. You don't have to worry about the combos. And it's like, <clears throat> you only need 10 or 15 points around to be doing really well, and it just worked. <laughs> Interesting. Stuff like that, or... I don't know. But then there's always games like that will always have like high risk, high reward sort of situations that if you can take advantage of like and no one wants to play high risk. So there actually isn't high risk because I'll be the only one doing it, you know. Right. And that's where all of a sudden you're starting to like read the table <coughs> yeah. a little bit more. In that's terms like of its like own skill. How how but, the competitors also go about the game. Right. Yeah. That, 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 that's that's interesting. And there's it's it's very like empowering too. I feel like when you have a strategy and you know you have a strategy that's and you're exactly implementing it. the strategy. Yeah, it's like what that's that's my other piece of advice. Anytime you're playing a game, it doesn't really matter whether or not you have picked a good strategy. If you just dedicate yourself to whatever strategy you come up with, you're probably in a better position than everyone else because they're probably just kind of like winging it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're playing with a group of people who's always playing board games, then chances are that's not going to work as well. But but chances are then you're one of those people too. So you're not, you don't need this advice. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, like it's, 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 uh, <laughs> What, what's the thing? I mean, this is this is almost like back in like my Halo days. I remember because they and, and I think this is a lot with like a lot of different video games. But the more online play that you do, the higher your like, you know, air quotes rank is or, or score or position or whatever. And then the game will sort of like accordingly put you up against people who are like similarly matched yeah yeah, like yeah it gives you like a ladder ranking so to speak yeah exactly so that way it's sort of like you're you're not going up against people who are just gonna like you know be top of the game because like that would not be fun for you either you you wouldn't stand a chance yeah but then also if you're just like going in and mowing somebody down then it's not fun for that person right either yeah um but i feel like i played so much halo once upon a time that i went through this like fabulous arc of like player growth yeah where it started off and i was just terrible and i lost all the time and like finally i got good enough to where it was kind of like okay like i can i could like middle pack it and then it was like okay i'm getting good i'm getting good like i'm like i'm like you know one two you know each round or whatever yeah and it was almost like i got so far into it that i reached a point where i came cascading down yep. because it was like i have now played so long that now the only people that I am paired up against are so good yeah. that it's like you you must have like found yourself into like the, the such a top echelon of people. Yeah. This is this is the nature of all like ladder based gameplay. Yeah. Is that like there is always this like learning curve at the beginning and then as you acquire like some amount of skill, you will almost quickly quickly rise up because like now you're a little bit better right and like but sure enough uh you will hit like the plateau where now you're at the same place where everyone else shot up to yes and like so while you were just crushing it game after game what 20 20 kills first place what oh not a problem all of a sudden it's just like all of a sudden everyone's impossible yeah and moving up is like incremental but there yeah this is yeah this it's very frustrating for sure yeah not frustrating but like i used to play that game clash royale on my phone and they just have a ladder like that and it's like you're basically like every time you level up like anytime you could um level up a card or something and make it like oh now every time i swing the hammer i hit for 50 more points or whatever it's like that's amazing and it's like sure enough for like five or six games you just crush everyone all of a sudden because now you have leveled up and your cards are better than your skill level and so like oh great the game will take you six games up the ladder and then you're stuck again at the same problem where now everyone has the same card again you oh know? sure 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 <laughs> you know? yep yep yep, yep. no so. this is yeah i mean so many so many different examples i can think of where, where i found myself like but it's it's a it's such a bummer for me though because i i mean I feel like what ends up happening is that like I I will like start a game. We kind of go through that like initial stage where you're like a little bit frustrated because you're like, you know, kind of like learning the ropes, kind of still building the calluses, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but then you have this like grace period where you get to be like awesome at it and it's like the most fun thing and it's rewarding and fulfilling and exciting. Yeah. And then you reach a point where it's like, well, that's it. <laughs> like, short of like going pro short of quitting my job and committing all of my time to this mm-hmm. there's there's not a whole lot of extra like forward oomph there's the that yeah yeah so you gotta you gotta figure out how to get past that and then like that's the point i think that probably when it comes to like professional athletes and stuff probably not nearly enough people give those people credit because they like persevered 
you right. know, like they got to the point where like it stopped maybe being like ridiculously fun every day and became yeah. like a nonstop slog. Exactly. They're good at dealing with the boredom of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not very good at dealing with the no, boredom. boredom. You got to get through the slog, man. You got to get through the slog. That's usually where that's usually where I, I, I lose it. But I'm sure everyone would be dying to know because we talk about it so much on the show, that this past weekend, I did manage to score a victory at our local Pokemon tournament. Whoa. Whoa. Does this mean you get yeah. points on your your journey towards playing? At oh, like no, not at all. No? No. Okay. I think in a, um, a more... <laughs> uh, they, they're right now, the only way to score points are like at regionals or international events because of like COVID and stuff like that. But they used to have like local league cup type things. Okay. And uh, if, I think if there was more like official things like that where you could score points and more people would show up and it'd be hard to win. I will admit it was a very small number of people who turned out. You know what? That's okay. It doesn't really matter because you know what? Even if more people come out, there's still times where it's like, well, yeah, it's still just three rounds though. And so I beat everyone there. So whatever, you know, that was great. Nice. Yeah. It made me feel pretty good because I was kind of playing kind of a gimmicky deck and it was like, this is designed to beat these specific kinds of decks and those are the kinds of decks that showed up. So I felt like even though it wasn't that many people, it was a dead on call. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. I, and I, I love that you ran with a um, a gimmicky version of it and, then, and that it worked. Yes. Yes. Because that's, very good. that's the type of thing where um, I feel like if you're the opponent and you know what they're up to, it's like, what? No. Oh, this is so I don't know if anyone knows anything about Pokemon cards. There's this like mechanic in the game right now called v union which if you don't know is sort of like the like i don't know i i would compare it to like exodia and Yu Gi Oh, where it's like you have to assemble i'm sure for so many people that helps i know if only like more I, people I was, know about exodia than uh, I, I, think was right you I was right there i was right there and the, oh exodia yes exodia. Of, course, of course i'm talking to mom and dad who are listening in the car right now yeah you know and they're like, they're yeah, like I, I what are know. you talking about yeah Basically, it's this like one big card that is broken into four puzzle pieces and you have to get all four of those pieces into your discard pile and then you can bring it out and you literally have four cards assembled as a puzzle piece as like your Pokemon that year. It is really cool because you have four cards that make one like mega card. It is like a mega card you have on the field. So it's super duper fun when you can get it. I think everyone who plays the game agrees that like it's super fun to get out, but it's, it's not like... It's kind of a gimmick. It's not really a thing. But so does it, the does the playmat like have a place for this? I mean, the playmat's just like an open thing. So I I did have to like adjust my cards around so that everything would fit. Okay, it's really especially awkward when it's like on the bench and there's this like giant thing on your bench. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. And you're like trying to move it and all the energy into the act. Like, hold on, let me just. Excuse me, it's, it's just a, a lot of stuff. A lot of things here. happening. Yeah. You get, you get, you, you're, you're bearing with me. But it's so funny the effect this has on your opponent when you're playing it because if you're playing a V, like it's so hard to get on the field and powered up and like ready to go that like it's it's almost not worth it. Like everyone sort of knows it's not very competitive at all. But as soon as your opponent sees you playing it, it has this like dual effect on them that you can like visibly even if you're playing online, it's like visible through the screen the effect it has when you're playing a v union you can just see the fear in you their can, eyes well it's that it's there's one it's the absolute like disregard of you as a threat at all and also total fear at the same time no way it's like uh, okay. it's a v union deck it's like okay this guy's not to be taken seriously that's a crappy deck i'm not going to lose to a v union deck but there's also like if they get it out it's going to be a real problem. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like, like they're not going to get it out. They're not going to get it out. It's but like, if I, this is do. basically a free win because they're not going to get it out. I'm terrified. You know, it's this very weird uh, effect that it has. So you can kind of work with that some. <laughs> yeah. Well, that adds up. That yeah. adds up. I, I appreciate the fact that you're, that that's the deck you're running because it's like, it's like, what's the most ridiculous thing I can do? I'm doing that. Doing that. More Pekka V Union guys. It was great. Nice. Try it out. Proud of you. <laughs> Transition. Transition. Jay, this feels like as good a time as any to talk about the Q3 quarterly merch option. Quarterly. Ah, uh, you see what I you see what I didn't do there? I see what you didn't do. Yeah, 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 because we call it that anyway. So yeah. it wasn't like a it wasn't like a um a play on words intentionally, but yeah. it is either way a play on words. It is a little yeah, bit actually. Yeah. It'll make sense in a second, I promise. It'll make sense in a second. So in case you're unaware, but I'm I'm sure you're not unaware because we talk about it all the time. Each quarter of the year we have a new exclusive piece of merch which is available over at patreon.com slash popcorn culture at the quarterly merch tier um this tier allows us to do a variety of really cool and fun things throughout the years where we can kind of like 
experiment feels like the wrong word, but like it gives us the opportunity and the creativity and a little bit more flexibility to do something really, really cool yeah. and different and interesting. Um, and so over the years, we've, we've done everything from the the plush um, one true host trophy that sits here next to Jay. Uh, we have done a deck of cards, the vinyl record, which are, you know, items that are currently yep. on the way. Hoodies, moleskins. Hoodies, moleskins. Yeah. Which, you know, have the, the, the popcorn culture logo, gold embossed on them. Um, but for Q3, we have something that I think is going to be, I think is going to be really special. It's kind of like, a, hmm. Hmm. I don't even know. It's it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's I mean, what it's going to be is like a challenge coin. It's going to be a challenge coin. Yeah, I That's mean, a good way you, to say it. Yeah. Well, challenge coins, if you don't know, are like a thing from like the army. I think is that where they're from? They're from yeah. So and they are associated with a like a libations game essentially, where I think different um, uh, groups, uh, whatever whatever like um, branch of military you're in, or whatever your particular unit or whatever is, I think is how it works. They like they would have. Um, like a coin that you're supposed to carry with you that like has representation of whatever your particular um, like unit unit is. unit is like yeah like one of our um, uh, patrons on our Super Carlin Brothers uh, monthly calls uh, Paul one of our we're just just the greatest guy Paul I know you're listening right now <laughs> pure delight Pro- probably traveling at like Mach 12 or something in a jet <laughs> but like but then also going to be completely like chill about it like you're about, yeah whatever <laughs> I broke the sound barrier I broke the this sound morning. barrier this morning it's cool um anyway like I think his his like unit's called like the is literally called like the Jedi or something okay yep yeah yep, right yep. that so I I wouldn't surprise me if Paul has like a Jedi themed um challenge, challenge coin. coin but so anyway the game is that then when you're at a bar um someone would take out their coin and they would like knock it on the table a few times okay and if you're a member of the service you would have to produce your coin to prove that you had it on you and if you didn't have it you had to buy a round of drinks for the whole bar oh so that's the game that was, that's sort of the, the inspiration for the game since then people have just sort of adopted challenge coins as like a uh, a fun thing to represent whatever group they're in to show one's allegiance. Although I like to think now that anywhere I went where somebody tapped the, the official popcorn culture challenge coin yeah. upon a table presented yeah. it to me and I didn't have my own that I would buy you a drink. You'd buy you a drink. <laughs> exactly. I- Look, Ben, you can be sure that come castle con time, if and if and when it ever happens, you're gonna want to bring that challenge coin with you. You sure people, is salt better. You sure is salt better because people are gonna be tapping that on the table nonstop. Nonstop, you You're gonna I'm have a- to buy a round of strawberry daiquiris for everybody heading into the strawberry <laughs> film festival. First annual. First strawberry annual. Film exactly. Strawberry film festival. Oh my! I'm gonna have mine sewn into my shirt. Sewn so, into it. So yeah. I can't lose it. That's right. Um. Anyway, so we're we're working on we're working on a rather special challenge coin yeah Um, i'm really excited about it i think it's going to be it's going to be beautiful and packed with details and is going to be awesome and cool and really just now i mean based on everything you said there's there's a there's a fun accompanying game if you will there is there is some very fun um i think you know i just think coins in general are fun they are like, fun. There's something there's, like because like we talk about treasure on this show so much. We do. You know? and it's we like, do. It's like they're akin to treasure. They're akin to treasure exactly. Like my my son Luke. Had the, every, not to talk about more about Pokemon cards, but sometimes when you buy like a promotional box, it'll come with like a different like coin you can use in the game or whatever. Yeah. Luke has got like 20 of these coins, and he just loves them. I they're bet. Like, so fun it's like and part of me is just like oh, I like I, they're pretty cool i want to play with coins too oh, oh, like, it always makes me so excited when there's another when there's a different uh coin so i don't know i'm excited i've been i've wanted to do like a challenge coin for super carlin brothers forever so i'm excited now that we're going to do it for popcorn culture yes um so so the very fun and special popcorn culture coin uh is is technically now available so if you are uh currently at the quarterly merch tier at patreon then you've already just pre-qualified for it just by simply uh, having that subscription as of the listening date of today, uh, which is, I don't even know, approximately July 22nd. <laughs> yeah. I can do calendar math well, which I don't think I can. Um, but if you sign up uh, anytime between now and September 30th, yeah. um, you will be eligible for this very special and unique 
popcorn culture treasure slash coin. That's right. It'll be. I'm so excited. It's going to be really, really cool. Patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Ben, can I tell you a different coin based dilemma I'm having? Yeah, right now? please, please do. And okay. Like, as much as possible because yeah. I, got, I got coins on the mind. You got coins on the mind? Okay. So um, I've been watching the show Ozark recently. Okay. I would make it my wick at the peak. It's very, very good, um, except that uh, it is also very, very adult in graphic, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to our younger viewers. Okay, yeah, for our yeah. listeners, as it were. Um, but if you are, if you want a really great show that's like Breaking Bad esque, but more Jason Bateman, you're gonna love Ozark. I'll tell you what. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's really high good. praise. Anyway, at some point in the show, uh, the main family acquires like a um, big old arcade game. Okay. Like you might have it in really, arcade. really, <laughs> truly not where I was expecting yeah. you to go with that. Didn't think so. Didn't think I was surprised when it happened in the episode. I was like, this is so fun. What a fun thing for this otherwise dark family to have. They have this fun arcade game. Do you think it's like Ozark's <laughs> version of Walter White buying a tankless hot water heater with all of his crystal meth money? It's not unlike that, Ben. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's kind of onto it. There's all these like flashbacks associated with the main character and how he, I think like he it like. It, it's as if when he was a kid, he used to have to go to the hospital and the hospital had the big arcade game and he would watch this other kid play and the kid was like magnificently good at the game. But like no matter how hard he tried, he could never get past the boss, like the final boss. And he just like realize it's like this is supposed to be this m- big metaphor that like the only way to win is by having more quarters to put in the machine. Oh. Like the only way to win is to have more money, which is, you know, basically the mindset of everyone in the show. OK, so. <laughs> gotcha. Anyway, I mean, I'm, I'm here for coins. Anyway, you know, the point Japan. is the point is that arcade games are our coin based entertainment basically okay right but because i've been watching the show it reignited my interest in owning my own arcade machine okay right and so in particular the game i've always wanted to own is just like an old like pac-man machine like oh so you're gonna go straight for the classics yeah oh i want yes what i uh, very much pac-man the like pac-man original is the arcade game that i'm the most interested in and most enamored with okay it is like i would be happy to get really good at pac-man and be very narrow on that (laughs) but here's the problem okay here's my dilemma okay is that you can go online and like look for like old refurbished pac-man machines like they're out there they exist they're kind of expensive but for the same exact price often you can also buy a more modernly produced arcade game like arcade big stall tanning tall standing machine that will have pac-man on it but also like 11 other games right right Right. yes i'm familiar with this particular it i mean it even feels like the type of thing we may have even like gotten it for somebody as like a gift once upon a time but there were like Back before HDMI cables, there was like the red, white, yellow cables. And I feel like you used to be able to buy these like little joysticks. Oh, that had yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like same same thing. Like like a bunch of games were like preloaded onto it. And you could just sort of plug it into the front of your TV and it'd be like, hey, play like any of these. Yeah, old arcade games. Exactly. Right. Um, and it was like, huh, that is kind of interesting that like, you know, you used to have to buy like a whole video game console and a bunch of cartridges to do any of this. And now you can buy like a cheap next to the cash register at FYE joystick (laughs) handle that is like $11 and has all the rest of it on it. Um, but so I get what you're saying though. So there's, there's like the Pac-Man machine. That's not the original Pac-Man machine. That's a more affordable version of it that technically has more user interface, however, seems less. Like, exactly like it feels exactly lesser. yeah it feels like i don't want to play pac-man on some like like pardon me like it makes so much more sense even fiscally to buy the machine that has got like a bunch of games on it that you can play including pac-man but it also seems so much less fun to me to not own like the actual an actual standalone old school pac-man machine mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i don't know what the correct answer is is and i feel like i very much get stuck on this because i'm like 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 genuinely stuck i'm like it it doesn't like like realistically do you want to be able to play more games like wouldn't that be better probably but but 
owning an original Pac-Man machine just is definitely way cooler. So I wonder if it's almost, and this is going to sound surprising, like this Pac-Man machine, the original, is yeah. like the great outdoors. It's like the great outdoors? It's like the great outdoors. Okay, tell me more, Ben. <laughs> okay, okay. Tell me more. Okay. So <laughs> if I, anything, I, because if I know anything about arcade machines, people who get really into arcade machines, it's that they, they the stereotypically the don't like the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me let me throw uh, my my argument out at you. Spin here. me a tail. Spin me a tail. So the thought here is that, um, like, the idea of going out into the wilderness, I think, makes you very like one with the space around you, which is that like there are no otherwise distractions. There are no other things like pulling your attention elsewhere and as a result i think you end up being incredibly and remarkably present Mm -hmm. and i feel like that is ultimately like the the great misunderstanding i think of anybody who thinks people who love the outdoors is that any is the belief that they love getting mosquito bites you know or or being in extreme hot or extreme cold temperatures as if that's like intended to be like enjoyable because it's like those things are problems for everybody and nobody wants to experience right like those extremes of of the outdoors but what i think comes with being in that space is a great sense of peace because it's like you are like here you're in this position it is beautiful it is like like and you and you can soak all of that in because there isn't like cars driving past you like honking or like an ambulance in the distance or mm-hmm. or you know like someone down the street trying to get their kids into like a minivan or something like that like all of those things like have an impact on your psyche in some way whether or not you're really paying attention to it at all and so Anyway, the point is, is that like the singularity of where your attention is when you're in the great outdoors is what makes it glorious. And so as I would compare that to a Pac-Man machine, it's almost like I wonder if part of what makes like the machine that can do one thing feel so great is that like the decision has been made for you. Right. Like it's not this like, well, which one should I do? today or like which one do i feel like i want to get good at or that i might be able to progress the most at and like it could be the case that like you primarily want pac-man and therefore like 90 percent of the time that's the game you'll play and then like the other 10 percent of the time you're experimenting with the other games but that's still a distraction that is no you know what this is good phrasing because you're like if you were to tell me like yeah would you rather have this pac-man machine that just plays pac-man or would you like to have this pac-man machine that can also log on to the internet and you can check your email and facebook i'd be like absolutely not oh yeah you right, know like yeah, then it feels yeah. very obvious right it's like i do like, not want the like, whole point of no. pac-man is to be in the great outdoors no, i mean exactly to play pac-man right <laughs> um but so i'm trying to think too like if if maybe there's something about like even going into the psychology of a young kid that might be going to an arcade with a limited number of quarters in their pocket for the opportunity to play a limited of number of games yeah like you didn't walk up to any one of those machines once upon a time and have the opportunity to play 20 different games from inside of the box in front of you 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 chose like okay like pac-man's like my jam so like I have like 11 quarters and I'm going to go and spend my 11 quarters on this very finite amount of time getting my full attention placed into, you know, the Pac-Man game. Right. But like you, you can, you can think about that. You can sort of like understand that you can see like where those, like those moments of time could have been like so precious because they were also so limited. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I'm trying to speak as romantically as I possibly can about the very, uh, the, the the glory and the beauty of the singular game. Okay, so I'm in favor. Like decision of, is made. I feel like I'm in favor of of simple Pac Man. Simple Pac Man. I'm down. I'm down, man. Nothing else. Nothing else. Um. However, I do think that once we were kids, once upon a time, there was a Ninja Turtles game that you could like six people could play at once. Yeah, I think. Yeah, sure. Right? Was it Ninja Turtles? I think it was X Men. Was it X Men? I think there. I well, the, I'm remembering at the Laser Venture. Oh yeah, yeah. It was At the X-Men. Laser Venture, it was X Men. Okay. I'm not saying there wasn't a Turtles game. Okay. In it fact, was... there almost definitely was because all the ones that everyone loves on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis were like ports from the arcade games. Right, right, so, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so it was X Men. 
But I feel like that one, I mean, that's not a whole bunch of different games, but that's an arcade game that I would like. What you're saying is I should turn my whole garage into basically an arcade. I'm kind of upset that you haven't <clears throat> already. The more that I say it, I can't believe I haven't. Yeah. Mm. It feels like, it feels like <clears throat> a project that like we could, we could stop recording right now and go yeah. work on. Like, you know, that feels like a good reason to just abruptly stop the conversation. To just abruptly stop it, to just start looking for old arcade game machines to yeah. start building our arcade. Yeah. That you know, like pretty good. I, the thing is that makes me upset the most about this is that CastleCon is not a very good name for a barcade. No, dude, ben, CastleCon is whatever we make it. And if there's going to be a barcade where you can get your strawberry daiquiris and maybe have to face a round of challenge coin libations, you know... <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to lie to you. Like mm. having some type of secret club associated within our arcade where like you have to like like the coins are not like available, you know, it's like you have to like figure out how to like access them. Oh. Like maybe occasionally like one is just like left, you know, like up on top. Isn't that like a thing? Like oh. people used to like leave quarters up on top. Of I the think machine. you would put it on on the screen, like on the bottom or something to okay. like call next. Oh, something. to call next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like, wouldn't that be like such a fun, like added element to a barcade is that there's like a secret. Oh yeah. Like a secret coin game attached to it. Right. You know, it's like a speakeasy arcade. It's like a speakeasy barcade. <laughs> oh, it's a, yes, yes. Okay. I think exactly. we found it. I think we found the essence, but so, okay. Okay. I like it. Would you require people at our barcade to, requ- to use quarters? to use the machines um i can tell you that i have no intention if i if i owned a pac-man machine in no in no way would i put quarters in it okay you would turn off quarter mode. i would turn off quarter mode for sure and just play i mean i would still like i don't know if you have the ability to like turn off game over or not i wouldn't i would not want to do that you but know? but think about the ones of dollars you could collect from, from myself ones. yeah, yeah. <laughs> luke i mean yeah you know. This, you know what maybe i should this would just be another way to like hide money from myself it'd be like oh man i gotta go i gotta go back to the bank gotta get another gonna get another roll of quarters, another roll of quarters. play this game i already owned it could play for free almost anywhere on the internet that's true think. that's true yeah you're going through an enormous amount of effort but no so i'm i'm uh, yeah this is true i mean we've we've already had this discussion before but the conversation that i've been the closest to getting you to like bite on a different business proposition mm-hmm. was barcade i mean there's just something fun about arcade games. So know? maybe maybe where we start is your garage, yeah. and get some proof of concept, yeah. some some POC, right? You know, uh, we can we can still have our coin game there. I can probably set up a kegerator for you, so we can have some some libation on yeah. hand. You know, maybe we'll have a train. Oh, that, a like, train goes going around, around the top. It goes around the top. Yeah, sure. We gotta have a train, right? Okay, I'm down. I like trains. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some decluttering in the garage. I'm thinking. Probably that's, you know, I'm also extremely pro decluttering. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all coming together. It's like it's all coming it's together. Like, all of my interests are converging on one thing. We can declutter. We can arcade. We can Pac-Man. It's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. Okay. I'm excited. Look, I'm dead. Listen to me, listeners. Uh-oh. I'm dead Uh-oh. serious. If you have access or knowledge of access to an old Pac-Man machine, that just plays Pac-Man, not like Pac-Man and Galaga, like Pac-Man. You you need to email us because <gasps> at Popcorn Culture Pod, at, yeah, just like tell tell us because I'm not I'm genuinely interested. You're in the market. I'm in the market. Uh, yeah. Okay. Dude, I can imagine. All right, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, lots of exciting things around the horizon. Um, but guys, as ever, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Pop. If you have access or know the knowledge of a Pac-Man machine for sale, you can email us at popcornculturepod at gmail.com. If you would like to get in on the popcorn culture uh, coin challenge coin, you can do so at Patreon.com/slash popcorn culture and select the um, quarterly merch tier. Um, which also provides a vote for who the host of each week of the show is. Yeah, if you want to sign up for that uh, that Jazzy J one, that would be a, a great help, and I'd really appreciate it. Please, <laughs> which really really helped me in my quest to get my Pac Man machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, or or just you know j- just drop a coin in the old Buzzy B column. You know, also fine. Cast sure, that, whatever. Cast that do that too. I, I guess do whatever you want. You right. know, I won't tell you how to vote. Right. Except vote for me. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your support. Until next time, pop, pop.